Yo, Arnell, is driving a car hard? Nah. But what about in Ecuador? Um, uh, it can be interesting. <laughs> nah. In today's video, me and my friend and co-worker Darnell are going to give advice for driving in Ecuador. Darnell has been driving a car for 26 years, 12 of which have been in Ecuador. And I've been driving a motorcycle here for seven. And all of those years have taught us a ton and we're gonna share it all with you. Not only that, but at the end of the video, Darnell will share his craziest experience driving a car in Ecuador. And I'll share mine driving a motorcycle. That had we done something similar in a different part of the world, we could have gotten in a lot of trouble. So stick around for that. Let's get started. The first tip that I would give is when driving in Ecuador, you have to be very careful with your surroundings for the simple fact that people here tend not to use turn signals. They're more as a decoration for your car than for something to actually use for safety. One piece of advice that I can give you as a motorcycle driver and probably the best part about owning a motorcycle is that you can drive your motorcycle in the middle of all the cars to reach the front of the lane. This is super convenient, especially when there's a high amount of traffic. So definitely take advantage of it. One thing that I've noticed throughout my years of driving in Ecuador is that many people when nope. they drive, they don't pay attention to the transit signs. It's like they don't even exist. Something that you need to know regardless if you're a car or a motorcycle is that if you are at the front of the lane, which as a motorcycle most of the time you will be, I recommend that you wait an extra one or two, maybe even three seconds after the light turns green. The reason for this is that most of the time, people will still be passing even after their light is red. So if you decide to start going after the light is green, there's a decent chance that someone will crash into you. So you definitely wanna avoid that. A pet peeve that I have about driving in Ecuador is that for some oddball reason, people seem very impatient at red lights. It's literally, as soon as the red light turns green, either the car or the motorcycle right behind you starts honking their horn. They cannot wait. It's like green, automatically, they want you to go. Super pet peeve, annoying, and I don't think I'll ever get used to that. A bit of a hack that you can take advantage of as a motorcycle is the fact that you can, and I do mean can, not should, drive on sidewalks in order to try to get to the front of the lane. Just make sure there are no police around. When I first started driving in Ecuador, something that was a pet peeve for me was honking the horn. That was something that I wasn't accustomed to. Like literally in other places, you can probably go days without hearing or using your horn, but it seems like here in Ecuador, you hear every five seconds. Another thing you need to know, regardless of whether you're a car or a motorcycle, is that you can park almost anywhere as long as you don't see a no parking sign. That's why you'll see tons of cars parked everywhere out on the streets, even though it does become a bit of a nuisance for you as a driver. And speaking of something being a nuisance to you as a driver, that same fact that there are cars parked everywhere also means you have to be very cautious when you're driving close by to those cars. Sometimes the people parked in the cars decide to randomly swing open their doors and of course, if you're driving something like a motorcycle, you can end up crashing into that door and getting into quite the severe accident. So definitely watch out for that. One thing that I have noticed throughout my years of driving in Ecuador is that the style of driving changes from city to city and province to province. For example, here in Puerto Viejo, it's no man's land. It's literally, you can just do whatever you want and no one will say anything. But whereas in a city like Quito, where there's more traffic, more cars, but it seems like traffic flows easily. Don't even get me started with Guayaquil. The city of Guayaquil is just the worst. <laughs> Highly recommend avoiding Guayaquil at all costs when driving. One thing that I can recommend when it comes to the speed of your driving is that you should definitely not drive too slow. What? And you might think that there's no problem with driving slow, but the thing is people here call you a camarón, which in English is a shrimp, which actually just translates into them calling you a turtle for driving slowly. And while that might not be a problem for you if you don't really mind people calling you things, it does happen to be a problem for some people who are more panicky, mainly because when they're called that, they're also honking at you, they're also trying to bully you into trying to go faster or trying to go when you shouldn't. And for some people, that might actually result in an accident. So don't give in to peer pressure. An experience that I've had is when driving in other countries, if the police got behind me, I would tend to get nervous. But uh, here in Ecuador, I don't get nervous because the police here, they really don't do anything. Like you can literally run a red light in front of a police officer and they will not stop you. One thing that I'd recommend is that you try to be an aggressive driver. What I mean by this is basically if you're stuck in an intersection or if you're gonna try to merge into traffic, take a chance, go for it, 
don't get stuck because most people are not courteous here and they will not give you a chance if you get stuck in those situations. Something else related to turning and sometimes merging is that if you're a motorcycle driver and you're not sure when the ideal time is to turn, then if you happen to be next to a bigger vehicle, you could stick really close to them, wait for them to turn, and then turn with them. This is another way you can avoid getting stuck when turning, but it applies to motorcycle drivers. So use it if you must. One thing that you have to have a heads up is here in Puerto Viejo, specifically in the center, people jaywalk a lot. That's constant. So if you're ever driving either a car or a motorcycle, you have to be very cautious with jaywalkers. Over here, it's people literally do not respect crossing the streets at the crosswalk. They just cross the street wherever they want, wherever they're at. One thing that you really have to look out for when you're driving here, regardless of whether it's a car or a motorcycle, is the whole situation with the right of way. The right of way here is called prioridad, which is just priority. And you have to be cautious because most people think that they always have priority. So basically on a street where there's a stop sign and clearly the other side that doesn't have the stop sign has priority, most people will still run through the stop sign and put you in danger because you think you have priority. So in any situation like that, it's always better to wait a second, make sure someone isn't crazy, and then go. When driving in Ecuador, be prepared to be upset a lot with taxi drivers. For some weird reason, taxi drivers tend to feel that they're the owners of the road. They act like they have the right of passage wherever they go. So be prepared to be upset with taxi drivers. Something to keep in mind as a motorcycle driver and maybe even as a car driver is that your worst enemies on the road are definitely going to be the buses, other motorcycles, and taxis. Because all three of these vehicles think they own the road. And yes, as a motorcycle driver, I do believe that I have those situations as well. A heads up for new drivers in Ecuador, especially when driving in small cities or small towns. A lot of places tend to have businesses literally right on the street. Like you're driving down the street and where there's supposed to be parked cars, there's somebody selling something. It can be a fruit stand or there's just selling something. You have to be very careful with people because they tend to put up businesses where they have no place being. I'd recommend to always make sure you're careful as to where you leave your motorcycle. Because sometimes, depending on where you leave it, if there's no one around, there's a good chance that people can come and they can actually take your motorcycle. And yes, by take, I mean steal. And even if they don't take your whole motorcycle, some people will still pick off parts of your motorcycle to take and sell. And you don't really want that now, do you? That's why a lot of Ecuadorians have become very accustomed to leaving their vehicles, car or motorcycle, in a place where they can see it. And that's actually not a bad idea to do, but it's kind of tedious when you're stuck inside a place and you have to go outside every moment to make sure your motorcycle or your car is still there. And as a motorcycle driver, it's even worse because if you have a helmet, that kind of forces you to carry your helmet around everywhere or have to buy a special lock that you place on your motorcycle so that they don't steal your helmet. Or you could have that whole little box thing that's in the back of some motorcycles. A tip, an important tip. Bribery is accepted here. Not legally, but it's accepted. So if you're ever driving in Ecuador, make sure to have at least $5 at hand, just in case you ever get pulled over because $5 will literally go a long way in Ecuador. While we know that most people won't use their turn signals, there are people who actually do use them but they use them kind of wrong. So don't ever assume that someone who doesn't use their turn signal isn't going to turn. And at the same time, don't assume that someone who has their turn signal on is going to turn. The assumption of any of these two things could definitely lead to an unfortunate accident. So be cautious. A heads up, when driving in Ecuador, and for example, you ever have a flat tire and you're on the side of the road, and a police officer drives by, don't expect that police officer nope. to stop and offer any assistance. It's not like in the United States where a police officer drives by, sees you in need, he's gonna stop and give you a hand. Here in Ecuador, the police act like they don't even see you. So don't expect any help from the police if you ever need roadside assistance. Another kind of optional thing I'd recommend is having a camera installed in your car or somewhere in your car and also having a camera on your helmet. Even though it's kind of dangerous to have a camera here because it could get robbed, <laughs> it's still good to have in case of an accident. Most of the time when there's an accident, the person who's guilty will most definitely run away. So if you have a camera, then you have a way to have evidence who committed the act and that way be able to get your due compensation. If you're coming to Ecuador and you want to rent a car, 
you need to at least know how to drive a stick shift because nine out of 10, it's very difficult to find an automatic. Most people here in Ecuador drive stick shift. Whereas in other places, for example, in the United States, everyone drives an automatic. Few people know how to drive a stick shift. Another tiny tip I can give you is to definitely carry around at least 10 to 50 cents whenever you go out. The reason for this is to tip the people who tend to take care of your car or your motorcycle in public places. And while there's no real obligation for you to tip these people, there's also really no obligation for them to take care of your vehicle. A recommendation that I would give to foreign drivers here in Ecuador is that if you're driving from province to province or city to city, you have to be very careful with truck drivers and bus drivers for the simple fact that here in Ecuador, there aren't any laws that specify how many hours a person can drive throughout the day. Whereas in other countries, for example, the United States, once a bus driver or a truck driver logs in a certain amount of hours for the day, he can no longer continue driving. He has to stop at a rest stop and, and rest until the next day. Whereas here in Ecuador, that doesn't exist. If you want to drive 24 hours, you can drive 24 hours. We don't have that control here. Another important hack, mainly as a motorcycle driver, but even as car drivers as well, is that you can, you definitely shouldn't, mm -hmm. but you can drive on the opposite side of a two-way street. Why exactly would you do this? The main reason for doing this is because sometimes there's so much traffic that even going through the middle as a motorcycle, you can't get to the front. So what most people will do is that they'll go on the opposite lane, get to the front, and then merge back in. There's obviously a lot of risk involved in that, especially the obvious, if a car is coming, it's going to crash into you. But for most drivers, the reward is more than enough. When I first got to Ecuador and I started driving, for me at first, it was kind of difficult, or not difficult, but I would say kind of uncomfortable to drive a car without insurance. Because here in Ecuador, it's not mandatory to have insurance nope. in your vehicle. Whereas in the States, if you don't have insurance, you can't drive. That was a little bit difficult driving here in Ecuador because I simply didn't know what would I have to do or what would I do in case of an accident. Something that I feel that I have to keep emphasizing is the fact that people do ride their bicycles on the street. And no, not in a bike lane that's next to the street, on the literal street. So of course you have to be very cautious because if you're driving very close to them, you could accidentally hit them. And I think no one's gonna come out happy with the result of that crash. In Ecuador, if you're ever driving down the road and you see bushes in the middle of the road, here it's used as a caution sign to let you know that up ahead there's a vehicle that's damaged. Something that I find that's kind of comical is that we live in Ecuador and it's very hot here, yet it is illegal to put tint on your window. Huh? To me it's kind of comical because of the fact that it's so hot and tint protects you from the sun. And here apparently it's illegal to put tint on your windows. So be careful with that. A heads up in Puerto Viejo Manaví or pretty much anywhere in Ecuador. If the speed limit is 50 and you're driving 50, you're driving too slow. What? Well, now that I've been driving in Ecuador for about 12 years, one thing that I can say that I constantly do now, that's something that I would never consider doing in the United States, is not respecting the transit signs. Like literally, I've become an Ecuadorian driver in my 12 years of driving. See a red light, take it as a stop sign. See a stop sign, take it as a yield sign. It says 50, eh, go 60, why not? Those are some things that I do here that I would never, never think about doing in the United States. Probably the craziest thing I did with my motorcycle was driving it at top speeds in the middle of the city. I remember around the time when I started getting really confident driving my motorcycle, I would just drive super fast no matter where I was going. And oh, was it dangerous, but oh, was it fun. That being said, I've become a more defensive driver now, so I don't drive as fast anymore. But driving top speeds in the middle of the city was definitely the craziest thing I did with my motorcycle. If you're looking for more information on things that you should or shouldn't do here in Ecuador, then you should definitely check out this video over here, where me and my friend Roberto tell you the things that you should do and things that you shouldn't do here in Ecuador. And it's good to have you here, Darnell. Appreciate the help. Thank you. And as always, make sure you take care, drive safely, and ace out. Peace out.